Well, hello there. It's Craig here at Flooded. How are you? I hope you're well. It is a quarter to eight on Saturday night, and I'm sitting there on Twitter, and I notice a tweet from Michael Crick. It says, I've just been expelled from GB News Studio after being invited there to criticise Brian Rose. I don't know who Brian Rose... I think I've got an idea who that is. 2021 London Mayor candidate. And then when asked why I thought Ofcom would close... Should should close BGB News down, I said, because it's a right-wing channel dominated by Tory and Brexit party politicians. Right, so that's him giving his opinion on something. So I saw that and I thought, oh, I've got to watch that clip. So I found it. It's Neil Oliver, and they're having a conversation about censorship, of all reason, things. And uh, poor Neil. Neil is, is a presenter, a great presenter of documentaries. I don't know how much of a live TV presenter he is. But uh, kudos to him for holding his cool here. But what's interesting about this is, one, the criticism levied at GB News, two, how Neil Oliver handles it, and three, what happens. Uh, so let's have a look. Now, you talk about being yeah. broadly uh, wary of censorship. Yeah. OK? Now, on this channel, yeah. on GB News, yeah. with in the company of Michelle Dubin, yeah. You said that you thought GB News ought to be shut down. No, well, yeah. that would appear well, because you're biased, to be you're right wing. For I mean, you do things like for... you have. You, you're basically. I mean, I've been fighting bias in television for a very long time. Me too. It's one of the reasons I left Channel Four News. Hashtag me I too. It was left wing biased, and I think Ofcom, who are one of the weakest institutions on the planet. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your viewing pleasure. Just want to point out the autocue in the reflection on the glass after the break. Time for something completely different. Just wanted to point that out. And you you can see it because it's mid mirror and I won't get into it, but that, that should be there. Let's just hear. I'm sorry I interrupted him. He's just about to say something important. Well, one of the weakest institutions on the planet Ofcom. should get a grip on you lot. I mean, it's absurd that you have Tory MP after Tory MP after Tory MP, uh, two leaders of the Brexit party, and uh, hardly any Labour MPs. There is no... You are a right-wing channel. It's got... The rules in this country are very clear. It's got him on it. There is yeah. no doubt. I don't, think you can, I don't think you can deny that the channel has made space for all kinds of voices. That's true. Right well, they're, they're, that's you know, true. They're predominantly on the right. I mean, look at predominantly on the right. Nigel Farage takes the week off. Who replaces him? Okay, I'm being, who replaces I'm being told, him? But the leader, the, to, the leader of the up, Brexit or, of Reform UK. Of the they're the screaming at him in his ear. In this country, you choose to replace we're Nigel Farage. Go, it's his successor as Brexit we're, Party leader. We're going into you've got break. Boris Johnson. Going into you've got Jacob Rees-Mogg. You've got you Philip Davis. You've got. Right, so it then goes to a break. Uh, by the way, this whole clip unedited without me staring at it will be on my Twitter feed. I'll post the, the clip in its entirety. Um, so they go to a break and then they come back from the break and I was like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And this is what happened. Welcome back to Neil Oliver Live. I will say right now, uh, without any input from anywhere else, that I'm very disappointed about the sequence of events that just unfolded there. Oh dear. The last thing I want to see during a conversation oh, he's between furious. grown ups about censorship is that conversation being brought abruptly to a close by others. I feel that that conversation should have gone on to its conclusion. <laughs> but there we go. That's the situation in which I find myself, but I make no bones about it. I don't stand by censorship. Okay. So he is so mad. And you can tell, I make no bones about it. Just, I'm a Scottish guy like him, and I, I know that tone. I make no bones about it. That's the language of a furious Scotsman. And uh, I, Neil Oliver's just gone boom in my uh, my opinion of him. I want him to be my best friend now. I want, I'm want i going to follow him on Twitter. I want him to, being I'm not pausing him at very nice spots. Brought but, abruptly to a close by others. I feel that that conversation should have gone on to its conclusion. But there we go. That's the situation in which I find myself. But I make no bones about it. I don't stand by censorship. Okay, something completely different. Right. Things to say about that. Well, one is that Michael Crick, first of all, is a journalist of note. Uh, he's an English broadcaster, journalist, and author, according to Wikipedia. He is founding member of Channel F of the Channel Four News team, um, and remained there. And then he joined the BBC in 1990. And by the way, 
when I do write my book about the BBC and why you should never work in television, I'll point out between 1990 and 2000 was the demise of the BBC because Channel 4, Channel 5 companies were coming into the fore and the BBC crumbled and started hiring freelancers. Anyway, he started work at the BBC's Newsnight programme in 92, uh, political editor, editor 2007. The guy has a lot of credibility and to see him on the screen um basically losing it Tory MP after Tory MP is um it's it's kind of disturbing to watch cuz he as a broadcaster he must know this is uh bad TV so i don't know if he's like he's, he seems to be a bit of an activist and you get this from channel 4 and this is why the bbc shouldn't hire uh people who are uh, uh, leaning one way or the other you need centrists all the time it's very easy to find out if somebody's centrist or not when you're interviewing them um but the point is that um he has been told neil oliver's been told uh this interview has to end uh, and i'm i'm listening to it i didn't hear anything i mean earlier on there was talk about people calling somebody on a mobile phone talking about a, a legal case and i don't know what they're talking about um, but so there could be all sorts of issues around, you know, um, you know, legal issues around he's naming somebody's name and shall we phone them? Uh, I mean, you watch that whole that whole clip will be on YouTube somewhere. But uh, from a I'm thinking about from a producer point of view, what would you do? What would you say to Neil Oliver in his ear to stop that happening? And I think that um, right, well, first of all, well done Neil Oliver for doing whatever your producer was telling you in the ear, and I hope it was the producer and not somebody from even higher up above that. Um, and um, the comment you made afterwards, I think, as a producer would be also fine. I don't mind you criticising the decision. I wouldn't mind you criticising the decision I made, uh, but it's my decision as as the producer of the show. And there could be a lot of reasons that producer made those decisions that you're not aware of as a presenter. So, um, and, and this issue of censorship, uh, stopping people saying things on broadcast television, uh, there's there, there's a difference between somebody standing on a soapbox and, and being allowed to say what they want. And anybody in that studio is able to do that in this country. There is difference. There's a difference between that and broadcasting what you want. Because anything you say is not you saying it, it's somebody else broadcasting it. So you can't um, do that. They, they can't do that. They can't broad, There's rules that they have to go by, and they can't just broadcast what they want. And GB News, uh, the criticisms of GB News from Michael Crick is that Tory after Tory after Tory. Uh, definitely the case um, it is, I mean, the like, look, I've got my little union flag down here. Um, and people might think, oh, he's a right winger. No, I'm not. I'm kind of doing that deliberately. That union flag sat there is me making a point about it's okay to have a flag. It's all right. It's the country I live in. I do that for American viewers to know, oh, this guy's in Britain. That's why. That's the only reason I've got that there. And it's an old cotton war flag, so I just kind of like it. And it looks great. But um, GB News does brand itself with, like, the national it's called GB News. It's got, even though it's not just news, it's definitely like lots of features. It's got comedians on there. It's it's doing topics of the day and everything's kind of what's going on. In, it's kind of like a culture war show. Um, and it it, 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 it is definitely got a, 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 a tinge of right-wing balance uh, bias, but it also does attempt at all times, I think because it's had its knuckles wrapped and it's been fined, I think it's been fined before, to, uh, to, to put a little bit of uh, the other opinion in there. I've been on the show twice, and I'm critical of the show on social media, so I've always been quite impressed that, I mean, Michael Crick's been critical of the show on, uh, before, actually on air, and they still have him back. And I think there's something to that, the fact that the channel's willing to do that. Um, and, and like, the, people must know that I've been critical, but, I, you know, they have me, they've had me back. So, um, and I kind of admire that because it's not about, uh, it's not a personal attack on anybody. It is a, a, a criticism of what's happening for a new channel. And I think that one of the issues the channel has is that, you know, who really there knows about, you know, what the rules, the, the ins and outs of what we can and can't do as a new channel, especially when they want to push the boundaries and test the waters for what can we get away with, how far can we go. But there is definitely, um, I, I don't like that there's so many people who are so senior in political parties who have like a broadcast platform 
to influence how people might vote when it comes to election time. Things like that don't bother me. Um, I've just noticed like people like Darren Grimes was just tweeting, oh, look at these patriots getting, uh, you know, getting told to move away from the cenotaph. And when you do some digging, you find out that those patriots are actually part of uh, what they call Turning Point UK, which Darren used to has got a link to. But he didn't mention that in his tweet. There's just little things like that that worry me that might be coming up in the future when things are getting really crucial about who's going to be the next governing body of this country. And it'll be very interesting to see what position GB News uh, have around that. So, uh, they're very, very interesting. Um, it, they, they did have to, about, just to wrap it up, they did definitely had to do what they did, which is throw uh, Michael Crick off air. He was off, off the wall. He was totally... The, kudos to the producer. Well done to Neil Oliver. Well done, GB News, for how you handled that. A great bit of television. Uh, Michael Crick was totally unhinged and... And it's kind of a shame because he should know better. Uh, and I feel bad for the other people, the other guests on the show there, uh, because, you know, they, they're they sat there. Pacing, but, well, if they can join it. The chap in the middle, I don't know who this is, but I'm guessing this is this somebody Rose guy. He ran for mayor. He's a very interesting looking chap. But I know nothing about it. I guess he's a hard right, not hard right, he's a right winger. I don't know who this lady is here because uh, we never find out. Um. But yeah, well done everybody on that show for how you handled that. And, you know, Michael Crick is, just comes across as a complete lunatic. I, I, I mean, he, he isn't. That's the thing. He's a he's a well-respected journalist. But how he came across there uh, to a lot of people would be unhinged. So what do you think about that whole incident? Is this a, an infringement of free speech? Um, and what do you think about my point? that uh, there's something to be, you know, the free speech is when you say something on a soapbox out in the public. Nobody's going to stop you doing anything. Say what you like, um, as long as it doesn't harm other people. Uh, but my point is that this is broadcasting. So they can't just say it. It's not their show to broad. Somebody else is responsible for the broadcast. So you can't just go on a TV show and say what you like because it's not you saying what you like. It's them broadcasting what you like. And that can't really work. Let me know your thoughts and uh, thanks for watching and take care of yourselves and have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.